us read the word of God. The book of John, chapter... John chapter, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. I am sharing on light. The last time that I stood here to share with us, I was sharing on light. I can prophesy, promise you that the next two weeks are going to be very powerful weeks for you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, we, we, are, we are living in, uh, in, uh, in a spiritual space called the spiritual space of now. Can you tell your friend now? now. Hallelujah. And that spiritual space of now is a spiritual space where things happen suddenly. You know, I, I came back from uh, Nini on, on Thursday. And uh, when we arrived at the, the airport, as we were coming out of the plane, I met uh, with Dr. Mike Mudak, you know. This is somebody I've never met. And uh, uh, so, you know, suddenly, praise the Lord, <laughs> I came to him and asked him, you know, I, you look like Dr. Mike Mudak. I said, yes, I'm the one. Anyway, immediately, I had to sow a seed into this man of God in the plane, praise the Lord. Because you see, when you meet with the greatness, you should never miss an opportunity to sow a seed. So immediately I got my money pass, got out those green notes, praise the Lord, and I gave him. And the man of God was so happy. And he told me, my goodness, Kenya loves me. Even before I leave the plane, I'm getting love offerings. Ah, I love Kenya. This is what Kenya is. And you know, he began to prophesy. He began to prophesy immediately. You know, seeds provoke her. There is nothing that releases a prophecy like seeds. I know you, are, you don't want to say amen to that. <laughs> but if you want to know that seeds provoke the prophetic anointing, praise the Lord. Visit the spiritual space and consult a prophet called Samuel. And tell him what happened when Saul appeared in your presence with the seed. Eh? The prophetic waters was tired up. Go and ask our great-grandfather, Isaac, when Jacob turned up with that nyamachoma. How the prophetic flow was tired up in him. You know? That, that is the divine principle. You want to see prophetic waters. There are two things that I know that stir up prophetic waters. Powerful worship and also seeds. So the man began to prophesy. And after prophesying, we came out, you know, with him from the plane. And it's the amazing thing. Some of the things that he began to declare, I began to saw them immediately. Because when we came out, cameras. Because you see, we came out because we had become friends with him. We were the last people to come out of the plane. People, the police came in because they collected him on a, a, a VIP level. They came into the plane to pick him and he told them, wait. We talked like for 30 minutes. That's what a seed can do. Praise the Lord. That's what a seed can do. You know. <laughs> At times people tell you they don't have time. Try the seed. They will create time for you. I can tell you. So, so when we are coming out, out of the plane, cameras, people are there waiting for the man of God. And of course now we are friends. We came out. He was holding me. So everybody thinks I've come with him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God can organize platforms for you. I'm sharing on light. Because the last time I was here. I was sharing with us on the light. And I think it is important for me to just uh, take you back a little while. That the light of God is inside of you. Of course in your spiritual man. That's where the glory and the light is because that is the part of you that came from God. You know, the, the outside form of you is what came from the earth because uh, uh, the, you were created from dust. That is where you came from. But the spirit that is inside of you is what came from the inside part of God because it is the breath of God. So I, I, I was sharing with the people that one of the, the major reason why God loves mankind so much 
why he will bow down and he came as a beggar and begged mankind to accept his son so that we can be reunited back to him is because of the fact that all the people that you see on earth 7.5 billion people carry a certain chunk of god because we came from his heart so your absence from having a relationship with God means that there is a void that is in the heart of God. When you turn back to God, that void is fulfilled and God gets contented. That's why God does not want anybody to die. Now, the Bible speaks to us here because there is a connection between light and love as we shall be looking. The Bible has told us that uh, 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 the same was in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made. And in him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. In him was the life. And the life was the light of men. That is the life of Jesus Christ became the light of men. Now there is a connection between life and light. And revelation. And revelation of knowledge. Life, light and revelation. In the kingdom of darkness it is death, darkness, death and darkness have a connection and a spiritual blindness those three things it is the opposite in the kingdom of, of of god we have life light and what and revelation in the kingdom of darkness we have darkness death and blindness now the Bible says that the life was the light what life is he talking about? He's talking about the Zoe life. Because there are two kinds of life. There is the, the bios life. Uh, what the Greek call the, the, the sick kind of life. That sick kind of life is the life that originates from things that are happening in your life. You have money, you have a car, you have a good house, your marriage is moving well. It is a temporary kind of life. You hear people say, I am enjoying life. You've heard people saying that in the world, isn't it? I'm enjoying life. Life is so good, you know, because they have money, they have good cars, they have a good job. You know, things are moving well. That is the lowest form of life. The bios life, the psych life. That it comes from the 10 planet things that we are enjoying on planet earth. And that kind of life is undependable because it is made up of ups and downs depending on how life is moving or the things that are happening in your life. That is the sick kind of life. That is the kind of life that uh, Jesus Christ spoke about, I think, in the book of John. Therefore, does my father love me? That I lay down my life that I may take it back again. Which, uh, what he was saying is this. For you to be able to tap and enjoy the Zoe life. You must lay down the bios life. You must lay down the sick life. Because the sick life which is the bios life is against the Zoe life. And when that Zoe life comes into you. It expels all darkness from your life. And that is the life that is not based on what is happening in your life. Whether you have money or no money, you have that life. Praise the Lord. Whether things are happening or not happening in your life, you have that life inside of you. Whether you are afflicted, you know, this life is very powerful. The Zoe life. Because it is not dependent brothers and sisters you've got to recognize that the life you have is a higher life it is a higher than the challenges that you are facing today because the life that you have is eternal life it is eternal life eternal life is not going to begin when you go to heaven eternal life began on the day when you accepted jesus christ as your personal savior because the thing is this on the day that you die, the life that is inside of you is just going to walk out of this body to a different atmosphere. But that life is inside of you. That's, the, 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 what it means is this. Though you live on planet earth, you are seated in heaven and already enjoying the spiritual blessings of heaven. That's why the Bible says that we are seated with Christ Jesus in the what? 
in the heavenly places. You don't know what you're carrying, you people. You just don't know. You've never sat down to think what kind of life that you're carrying. Because inside that life that comes from above, which is the highest form of life, there is success. There is prosperity. There is healing. The healing, you know, in the days of, 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 of the woman of the issue of blood, because she was not yet born again, she had to, you know, to stretch out her hands to touch Jesus. You know, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. Today we are born again. We no longer need to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. Why? Jesus is no longer passing. Jesus is inside of us. The life is inside of us. You've got to understand things have changed. I keep on seeing people still in the New Testament church and they are saying, I want to touch the hem of his garment. I don't need to touch the hem of his garment. He's already inside of me. Glory to God. What do I need to do? Because the glory and the power and the life is inside of me. But listen, as I shared with you, there are certain demonic structures in your soul that have always been stopping the manifestation of this life. Praise the Lord. Because those are the things that were stopping the manifestation of the glory of God. Unfortunately, you see, some people will always live in reverse gear. You are not going to deal with the iniquity all the years of your life. Some of you have dealt with iniquity, but you still don't believe that you've come out of what? you still don't believe praise the lord that's why you can have iniquity you will deal with iniquity until you, uh, until you are 80 why because you are getting stuck on a, one particular truth praise the lord Child of God, I want you to understand how to move on. How to move on. Well, when God brings revelation or knowledge, and then you practice that revelation or knowledge, and then you understand because it is by faith, if God has dealt with it, what is the next level? Because if God has dealt with the iniquities that were stopping the manifestation of the glory and the light and the life of God, now is the time for us to see the manifestation of the light and the glory of God in our lives. Manang, let me tell you, ever since I came to Kenya, I came here in the year 2000, there are people who are always moving in meetings to break curses. Kutoka mwaka wa elifumbili, 16 years of doing what? Ninini, lana gani hizi? You know, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are telling, you are, you are saying the devil, the devil, the devil, and even the devil is telling God, God, sincerely, you know, those people chased me away. I'm not doing anything to them. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor after deliverance, you need to change your mind. You need to change your mind. Now, listen, I, I was in Kampala. I want to attend Benin. Benin came to Uganda in 2000, maybe 2008, I can't remember. And then uh, what, what, what happened was this. I, I really lo I love Benin so much. So when we, we came out of the meeting, I met, I met another gentleman. I said, what is wrong with you? Why? How could you miss such a meeting? Some of us have come all the way from Nairobi. Crawford Dollar was coming three weeks after Benin. And he said, ah, I don't need to come for Benin. Because the Holy Spirit and the presence, I'm okay, I'm prayerful. My problem, I am poor. <laughs> so, instead of getting my offs to come for Benin, because there, Ninaona, I have achieved something. Because I know Benin is going to bring me to the atmosphere of the presence. It's going to be teaching me about the presence. But I know, concerning the presence, at least what I know, 
is, is, is enough for me. I'm not so high, but it is enough to take me. But concerning money, <laughs> I am so badly off. And the man who, I know Benin is not going to talk about money. The man who is going to deliver me from that one is a Creflo dollar. Oh, so I said, anyway, people understand what they need. Do you know what you need? So, this, <laughs> you know, you've got to begin declaring that iniquity has died completely in your life. You are now iniquity what? Iniquity free. Now, if I am iniquity free, what am I expecting to see? I want to see the what? The manifestation of the power of God. Oh my God. But you see, if you don't understand how God works, you can rotate like this. And yet the demons have gone. <laughs> you are like, you know, I, I, I think I told you this testimony about the chicken I, I used to get from Uganda, from my village. You know, the, those chickens from my village. I, I used, my mother used to give me a lot of chicken and I would tie them with banana fiber. And when we leave the village, immediately they would begin to fight. <laughs> but they are tied. They fight. They are tied. They fight. Ah, then they know to me fungwa. Akuna chakufanya. So they keep quiet. They submit. And that's how many people submit to the devil. Hallelujah. I break it, 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 I break it. I break it. Things are not changing. Tomorrow I break it, I break it. They're not changing. I say, ah, anyway, this thing. <laughs> now listen, when I bring the chicken here, of course we remove them from the car. And I hadn't observed that. And tied the banana fibers and left the chicken. Hallelujah. The chicken continues staying like this. So after some time, I went to the bank. Is the chicken, what's wrong? So I kicked one of them. He realized he can run. It was so happy. I said, You chicken. <laughs> been free for a long time but the banana fibers have deceived your mind you are bound forever some of you iniquity is died like any you still think <laughs> praise the lord so we were, we were, you know, we say that that glory and that power is locked up inside your spirit, but that was what was stopping its manifestation. But now that that has gone, it is now time for you to begin manifesting miracles. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to see great testimonies taking place in your life, giving testimonies of what God has done because God is faithful. Hallelujah. So, the Zoe life that he's speaking about here. Jesus Christ had to lay down. He had to lay down the, the bios, the sick life, in order to be able to tap into the Zoe life, which is an eternal life. Okay. Now, the member says in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, because the Bible is telling us that this life was the light of men. It was the light of men. In other words, when you get born again and this life comes into you, you can no longer live under the grip of darkness. Because light has come. The life brings light. You know, many of us, before we got born again, we were dwelling under the grip of demonic power. But when that life came into us, it opened our eyes. Hallelujah. You, you remember when you were not born again, how you used to look at impossibilities. And you know, I will never forget uh, every time I used to take my sister 
I had my sister who used to go and see the husband in Saudi Arabia after every three months. And every time I went to the airport, I would ask her, do you really think I would ever enter a plane? And she would tell me, hey, these things are difficult, but I don't know. These things are not easy. I don't know. You see, people, before you get born again, you have a mindset of failure. You have a mindset of impossibility. You have a mindset, you know, if I'm not connected to this politician, I cannot make it. If, I've not, if I don't have a degree, I cannot make it. If I don't have a master's, I cannot make it. I mean, really, people that are not born again, whose minds have not been regenerated, they have a mindset of failure. Because they look at things according to their natural circumstances. The sick life that is dependent on the temporary circumstances that are taking place. But when you accept Christ as your personal savior, I thank God forever. My eyes opened. And I saw possibilities, hallelujah, that whether with a degree or no degree, you can still make it and you will fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus. Whether you are connected to a politician or nobody, thank be to God if you are connected. But even without being connected, God is going to help you. That is one of the things, and you see, that is why people that are born again, when we speak, many of our relatives cannot understand us. Because we speak about big things. Why? Because of this life. Because this life removes away the darkness. It removes away the mindset of failure. It removes away the mindset of impossibility. Where you are thinking, where am I going to get the money? We no longer think like that. Because we are supernatural people operating on a realm of possibilities. I declare over your life, child of God, the life that is in you is going to cause you to succeed. I'm telling you, you know nowadays when I sit down with the kind of people and they talk, I realize I'm on another plane. How are you going to buy that house with your salary? Ooh, they are calculating. You don't know that God, his ways are higher. They are higher than you. you. You are not an ordinary human being. You are a superhuman. The, the life of God himself is inside of you. When God was creating the universe, where did the things come from? Things come from nowhere. They were not there. But he spoke and things happened. The same spirit that he used to speak and things happened. He has deposited a chunk inside of you. Amen. This life was the light of so many men. What does that mean? You are supposed to be the hope of people. When people see you, Okinjia Mahali, healing has entered. Okinjia Mahali, deliverance has entered. Hope has entered. Hallelujah. When you enter somewhere, the atmosphere must change. Because you are the light. You are Jesus is no longer here. He's inside of you. And that life that he has put in you is supposed to be the light of many people. There must be certain people that are celebrating and giving testimonies because of you. On a party, I'm going to Pesa. Na Sunday, anasema anapatia ushuda. Anasema, you people, hee, I was finished. And God touched one brother. But really, where you enter, you never make an impact. Even when the orphan sees you, anaona tu mashida. Hee, anangi. Are you the light? Brothers and sisters, when we talk about light, it's not just about preaching the gospel. You must become the financial light. Financial light in your family. Okinjia Mahali, when Asema Anyango has come. Anyango mekuja. Mashida zangu zote zimeenda. Lakini wana fika maali, 
you bring more trouble. <laughs> My cousin was boasting to me about his father, and he was saying, in the village where he comes from, his father drinks from bars from, from 1st to 30th. They give him pombe. When he goes to the shop, they give him soap, they give him sugar, they give him salt. They, and you know, I tell them, our money. And you just tell them, hmm, you think Jita will not come? His son was called Jita. So when people hear Jita, <laughs> take he, we know Jita. When he comes, he will sort out all the debts plus interest. Kasirivu, nobody could deny Kasirivu debt in that village. He goes to the shops, they give him, because when Jita comes, he pays off everything plus interest. Those are the sons we are talking about. Lakini you, onangia maali, there is no testimony of light in a vika. Are you the light? Really? Are you impacting people? Oh, now I shout to Akiria. So, what Nani Ariku up? He broke my heart. Ariba Pesazam. Borrowed my money and never paid back. Are you that kind of person? Huh? This life was the light. Of men. Please ask yourself a question. I always tell preachers if you go to a place to preach and they don't invite you back, there is a problem. How can you go and they don't invite you back? And then you keep on calling. When am I coming back? Because you carry a quarter light, a very small light. Which just makes demons uncomfortable, but they don't go. In our hearts, Lord, in this nation, awaken me, Holy Spirit, we desire.